Travis, uh, good morning. It's been exactly three months since our last interview was uploaded. Excited to hear how everything has been for you. How are you? I'm good, man. Good to see you. You as well. So in those three months, what noticeable things have happened that you can talk about? A lot of stuff, dude. A lot of stuff. I mean, at around March when we had our first interview, I was around 10K in um, sales for copywriting. And that's gone up to a little over 20K now. And, you know, I've recently kind of taken my foot off the gas with copywriting specifically to focus more on my coaching career, which I've been doing with um, fitness, nutrition, and just overall mindset on, you know, how to develop that like next level um, discipline mindset that it requires to just kill it in life. I want to help other people out with their own journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how has the coaching business gone? Are you getting clients for that or people interested? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely going a little slower than, um, I originally planned it to be, that's fine. You know, it's, it's so much fun for me to hop on, like make videos on copywriting, make videos on mindset, make videos, um, with the gym, you know, it's all stuff that I really enjoy doing. And of course, at the same time, I still have copywriting going on on the side just to kind of, you know, pay the bills and survive. But, um, uh, yeah, that's like my main passion now, just doing social media and inspiring others to do awesome stuff too. Right, right. Yeah, it makes sense. It takes time to build up a personal brand. So completely fair. Yeah. Did the work you've done in copywriting, did that help you with building up the coaching business? So much, so much. So I don't know if I, I think I brought it up in the first interview. Um, my mentor, Wes Watson, he's the person who got me sober and he's the person who got me like just training it in the gym on my nutrition. But his, um, his top tier program that he offers is teaching coaches how to be coaches. So just a social media branding thing. And um, through that, I mean, it's very expensive. It's like 7,500 bucks for three months. And I mean, for a lot, that's for an 18 year old, it's a pretty good amount of money, but everything that I made from copywriting, just put right into that. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of money on investments for filming for the day. Um, I was back in California last month and spent two grand on a Lamborghini to rent out for the day and just film content with, um, you know, all these supplements. I, I, I just reinvest a lot of my money that I make from copywriting into the personal brand and even better, great news since I was last with you on that call is that I'm dropping out of Oklahoma state, leaving university and I'm moving to Miami, which is going to be like awesome, you know, and I wouldn't be able to do that without the money that I made from the real world. So super blessed to be able to have that. All right. Could you go a bit more into explaining your reason for dropping out and moving to Miami? Yeah, it's just depressing down here. I mean, no one has the same drive and mindset that I have. All they want to do is drink. All they don't want to do is party. And they're just so accepting of being average, you know, and that's not the mindset that I have. I want to be around like-minded people. There's no opportunity down here to actually make money other than just go to school and I know you're from, you know, Europe, but Oklahoma is just not the place to live. <laughs> it's like just totally dead out here, you know, no drive, no energy. And I think Miami is going to be the perfect place to, to have that. Okay. Fair. So for a European like myself, could you explain what is appealing about Miami? Literally just the energy. I mean, the beach, that's, that's one thing. Um, the weather, like it's, it's always warm down here in the winters and it, it can get down to, 15 degrees sometimes um and just really the day-to-day -day, like boring aspect to how life is in here in oklahoma everything moves so slow everyone down here is so old it's the same drive to like the same classroom where the walls are just totally blank there's no projection for you to express your own thoughts i mean it's just like you know read this chapter take a test on this i mean there's just no creativity in school at all and with my social media page and with copywriting, I'm able to put my own personality into like all my own work and do it on my own time and do it wherever I want remotely. And um, yeah, there's just so much more freedom not being in school. Mm -hmm. All right, can believe it makes sense. There you go. And how different is your average day now then compared to three months ago? Has there been any kind of change there? Yeah, it's just a lot more work, which has been way more enjoyable, you know? Before it was going, it was waking up. The wake up time is the same. So 3.30 a.m. every single morning. 
which is, you know, I don't break on seven days a week. And then the gym right after that. So that stayed the same. But um, as far as class goes, you know, I don't have to spend any time studying. I don't have to spend any time actually physically in the classroom. I have almost double the amount of time now to just completely focus on social media and copywriting, which has been Mm -hmm. awesome because it's all stuff that I love. Right. And I can't remember if I asked this last interview, what would you say to people who call that excessive, the amount of work you're putting into this? I wouldn't be able to like live happily without it. Like straight up. I mean, like it's, I get all the worth from the work. I can't, I'm going to Cabo in a few days and I know by the second day, I'm going to want to be back in this apartment in Oklahoma where there's nothing going on because I won't have the same amount of work to be doing. I can't sit there and just relax on the beach. I mean, I can, and I think it's needed every once in a while, but for more than two days, I'm like, I'm just so ready to go back into the struggle, like the struggle, the work, the grind, like that's where I feel most comfortable. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of the emergency meeting with Aiden Ross yesterday. I don't know if you watched that. I saw 10 minutes of it. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay. So I know one of the things Tate said to Aiden was you shouldn't be seeking happiness as your primary metric because then it leads to, I mean, it leads down a very bad road. If you do the opposite and you ignore that feeling of needing to be happy, then inevitably you will actually be happier long term because it will allow you to strive for, let's say, what you're doing. You're not prioritiz- prioritizing happiness, but through what you're doing, you're actually happy in day to day. Maybe I kind of said that wrong way around, but you get what I mean, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's just really, there's like no ideal situation where you're going to be like 100% happy of like all the time. You know, even if I, I do have a good enough money to just like take a month's vacation off and just totally enjoy myself for a month. But it's like, It is. I I see what you're saying. It's kind of hard to word it, but um, at the end of the day, really, I just kind of find the worth in the work, you know, there's going to be a struggle either way, but the best struggle is through actual, like the grind really. Mm -hmm. Okay. So copywriting, coaching business, did you go through business mastery at all within the real world for the coaching business? Go through the what? Business mastery campus. Uh, not, I think I did a little bit in the very beginning. I know they've updated a lot since I've joined Mm -hmm. January. Um, I went through like Andrew Bass's, the copywriting professors. I went through his main business mastery, um, bootcamp step, but, um, a little bit of Arno's in the beginning, but I know he's added a bunch since then. So I was just wondering if that was applicable, if you made use of any way. Okay. So let's see. Is there any more in terms of community within the real world? Do they have any impact on you over the past three months? Anything to say there? Yeah, I've connected with a few people since um, since joining. Like uh, Alex Marshall is one one dude that I've been talking to a little bit. I think it's pretty cool to see him. Only 15 years old. Very, very inspiring. Um, and then especially after doing my interview with you, I was able to connect with Sartorial. Um, we've been keeping up together. And then also um, Pablo from Wallerwind. He, he, I mean, I was actually just DMing him the other day. He's down in Miami, so we're going to connect when I move down there. So it's just cool. I mean, the real world, it's, it's built me up these connections way higher than I could have ever possibly imagined. You know, I thought right. before it would just be these, you know, making a few extra thousand dollars a month. But, you know, now it's really bringing me to that next level, which I couldn't have gotten anywhere else. All right, love to hear that. And yeah, meeting Pablo in Miami should supercharge your progress, I'm sure. Then being around people like him, definitely, yeah, huge benefit there. So excited to hear during the next follow up again how everything's progressing, how much more you're even doing. Um, what about physicality? So you're saying you're waking up at 3 30 a.m., doing work, going to the gym. So throughout those three months, that's all been consistent, right? Yeah, I mean, you can follow me on Instagram, Travis with two S's on Blackburn on Instagram. I mean, every single day I, I post my wake up time. I never miss it. I mean, since our call, I mean, I haven't I haven't missed a wake up time since. So huge. Because uh, I used to do waking up at 4 a.m., but I only maintained it for three months before I went on holiday and then stopped doing it. So very much respect what you're doing, actually keeping up 
for so long waking up at 3 30 a.m making it part of your lifestyle permanently yeah for people who are interested as well in let's say sorting their sleep schedule wanting to get the sleep routine going what advice do you have to them maybe not to wake up at 3 30 let's say 5 a.m 6 a.m what advice would you give from your experience well, from my experience, I've always just been a very extreme person. And I believe that being extreme is what brings you to that next level up. I mean, it wasn't like when I started doing the early wake up times that like I took baby steps into it and went from 7 a.m. to 6.30 or 6 to 5. Like, no, I, when I first started doing this, I, I went straight up 4 a.m. and I didn't break. And people got to realize that your next level up is behind being extreme like that. And that's, I mean, if, especially if you want to move quickly. People ask me, like, oh, you're 18 years old. Like, how do you move so quick? How have you made this much money? It's because I'm able to make decisions fast and they're big. You know, I don't just slowly put my feet in the water. Um, making a move like this to Miami, like, this is like something my entire family, my mom was telling me not to do it. My grandparents were paying for college. They didn't want me to do it. Everyone was telling me not to. But I mean, I just, I pulled the trigger on shit. And I didn't even like decide. I told them back in like very beginning of this month in June. And I decided that I was going to do it like two days before, you know, that's a decision that most people would take so long to think about before actually deciding on. But I mean, I just, I just move quickly. I mean, even this like arm tattoo that I got, I mean, thought of it like a day before I got it and it's going to be on me at my arm for life. It's like people got to make decisions quickly and, um, and make a major, you know, and not to move too slow. And I guess with this wake up time, I know that was kind of a tangent, but, um, you know, just uh, be extreme with it. Just realize that you're a man and you can take the shit. And if you look at the people who actually are being successful right now and you just follow in their steps, chances are you're going to have that same level of success. So. Mm-hmm. What about cold showers? Do you take those or do you prefer? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a warm shower in the same amount of time that I've um, started the wake up times. Mm-hmm. And any benefits there from cold showers? It's just the mental thing. It's, it's really just a mental thing. Like I'll, I mean, I take it every morning. So I get out of the gym every time I leave the gym and I make sure that there was just one, at least one exercise where like I push myself to the absolute max. Cause at this point it's not even really for the physique. It's just for the mental. Like if I didn't like really, really struggle then I'm not going to feel fulfilled walking out the door. And by the time I drive home and I'll get my coffee and everything and I get back to the house, I like my energy kind of goes down a little bit. So that cold shower just brings me right, right back up to that, like, you know, level of struggle that I have to go through to just feel fulfilled. Interesting. Okay. So you're trying to maintain energy levels there as well. What, when you eat food, do you notice a drop in energy? Recently it's been tough. I'm only on 1500 calories a day right now at 70 grams of carbs, 28 grams of fat. And for those of you who don't know macros, like that's low, like really low. So, um, yeah, but at the same time, even though there's not a lot of energy from the carbs, I'm constantly starving throughout the day between each meal. And that almost like keeps me awake and like more mentally sharp. And it's like this hunger that you have, it's, it's almost like beneficial to business. Like you just, you're not, you don't get comfortable, you know, thoughts flow a lot easier in your brain. When I wake up at three 30, like, I'm like so hungry to start the day. I'm like hungry for breakfast that it just gets me right out of bed. So even just from the nutrition alone, I think people that like, if they were to go into a caloric deficit and let me show them their macros and what it takes to, you know, actually like, you know, have the right nutrition. I think just from that alone, like not having all that cloudiness that you get from all the shit food that they're eating, like that alone is going to push them forward. Mm -hmm. So two things, just to add on to that, two things I've noticed if you eat in the morning right after waking up, that's a lazy mindset there. Because I mean, if you think about ancestors who would need to go out and hunt for their food, they wouldn't just wake up and eat straight away. So I think I like doing that as well. I don't eat for maybe five to six hours after waking up just because that hungerness does give me clarity as well. And overeating um, also kind of messes with your mindset, at least prior, uh, previously when I'd overeat. I'd notice a drop in energy levels. That's why I asked you as well. So since you're on a caloric deficit, I guess you don't notice as much that drop in energy levels after eating. Or would you yeah. say that's that's uh, something that doesn't happen to many people? 
Yeah, no, I mean, overeating is like, it's a huge, huge vice. It's, I think it's one of the most basic vices that you can really start with. You know, overeating is like the most basic one, most common problem. Then you have like little things like cigarette, nicotine addictions, and then you have like things like drug and alcohol addictions and so on and so on. And basically what I've done since I've gone sober is I've just like kept myself at the most basic level of desire, you know? Like if, if we have carbs and food right here and the drugs and alcohol up here, I'm still stuck at level one because I just forced myself to not eat those foods. So one of the best things also about this whole like training and nutrition program is that like my mind isn't even like thinking about the drugs and alcohol because I'm just so fixated on actually having some food all day. Like, so, I mean, it keeps you very mentally sharp and it keeps your priorities in line. When, when we get that food, then it's like, okay, what's the next desire? You know, the drugs and alcohol. Okay. What's after that? Like getting an extra sleep. What's after that? Like the, you know, the very next thing. So when you just keep it at the most basic level, um, you keep your priorities straight. Oh, very interesting perspective though. How has your environment been influencing your business so far then? Yeah. So, I mean, when I was in the frat back in October, right before I joined the real world, my environment was just completely fucked. I mean, everyone in the frat was just the most low level, like bomb degenerate person. Like they had no goals or aspirations. So there wasn't anyone to bring my energy up. It was only going down and there was no one in alignment with the purpose that I was meant to be on. So I had no sense of direction. So basically what I had to do was just isolate myself from everyone in the very beginning. You know, I had to go into just living by myself in this apartment, not going out on the weekends and seeing people because, um, you know, if it, if it was, if I had to choose, I would rather choose just being by myself and, you know, not having that influence. But now I've kind of come to the realization that there's a whole nother power and just surrounding yourselves, surrounding yourself around like-minded people. So if I just find the right group that thinks just like I do, I mean, it's going to have the reverse effect of what I had in the fraternity and it's just going to bring me up higher and higher. So I know in Miami recently, um, there's just been a lot of just hype and attention and energy that's been going down there. So I believe that like, if I just find like a solid group of like three or four killers and like we, I, the dream is to like find a really solid group of people, like buy a house together, like wake up like 3.30 AM every single day, just like crush workouts, crush business, then like go out and have fun later at night. But like, just to be around people constantly as like a constant reminder and um, accountability thing. Like, I think that would just be like the coolest thing. Kind of like how like Tate has um, his thing with Tristan. They're constantly on top of each other. They're um, constantly trying to like one up each other in workouts. You know, that, that goes a long way. It really does. And you can only go so far when you're by yourself. So. All right. A uh, big thing though, because currently you see a lot of the, I don't know, Sigma males, whatever you want to call it, saying you need to be a lone wolf, go out by yourself, like do it yourself. But yeah, it's definitely what they're missing is surrounding yourself with like-minded people, as you're saying, who will supercharge that productivity, push you to the extreme uh, in order for you to evolve, become better. That's definitely, yeah, the next level that people don't talk about enough. Yeah, and I think the Sigma, the Sigma wolf thing makes sense. Like in the very beginning, as in you might be hanging out, hanging around the wrong crowd. And then like you like finally like end up straying away from them, being on your own for a while, developing yourself like physically, financially, whatever it might be. And then once eventually like you just hit this certain point from being that like lone wolf, you end up finding a whole new tribe of other wolves who are just like you. And then you just build up and create each other even higher. So like, mm -hmm. I think like going through that initial phase of being by yourself is necessary but you need to find that sense of community from like something like the war room or like, you know, whatever it might be, just um, a group of people who you can just really relate to and um, are going to push you forward. All right. And one more note on that. Uh, I remember a quote I used to think of a few years ago. It would get passed around a lot. It's lonely at the top. That's what people will tell you, but it's really not because as you're saying, again, you can find people to surround yourself with who are at that same level. As you continue leveling up, you're leveling up your frequency, whatever you want to call it, and you attract people on a similar frequency to you. So you really do, I mean, move up together with people. It doesn't have to be alone the whole journey. Yeah. Cool. 
it makes you question. I mean, the people that said it's lonely at the top. I mean, how um, how ethical was their way to the top? You know, yeah. like, did they snake some people? Did they you know do some things that wasn't in alignment with their conscience or with God? Like, chances are that's probably what happened. You know, if if you're mm-hmm. acting ethical and in alignment with God and your definite purpose the entire way there, I mean, uh, you're gonna attract like you said the right people and shouldn't be lonely. Right. Very good point. And since you mentioned the Tate Bravos earlier, what impact has have Andrew or Tristan had on you? Andrew's had a huge impact on me, man. Like from the very beginning to where he used to kind of be like, you know, he had the bigger ego. Like this is when he was first like really like blowing up with Aiden Ross and everything. And, you know, it was mainly all about the cars and everything. That's what attracted me in. And I think that's what attracts everyone in really from the very beginning, you know, through TikTok, seeing all of his nice things. But, um, you know, once you really get to like, really, once you really get deep into those podcasts, like that most recent one he had, that was four hours long, um, that he did at his house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they just go into such deep topics. Like he's such a insightful person who has like such a great perspective on the world. And I mean, his purpose is just like so much more meaningful than like everything that people try to, you know, put on it, put on him online. You know, he really wants to better young men and make a difference in the world and um all at the same time when he started going through his conversion to islam i've kind of been having recently like my own um like coming to god and you know i wouldn't want to say like jesus specifically but realizing that there's a higher power up there for us and guiding us along the way and um to hear him talk about that too kind of really resonates with me and helps me along my own path so He's helped me a lot spiritually. I mean, obviously financially without Andrew, I wouldn't have had the real world to make all this money and um, just with general mindset on self-development. So, I mean, he's helped me out a lot. I can really appreciate him. Beautiful. Again, love to hear that. So since you're on this trajectory now, where do you see your life heading in short term, medium term, long term? Yeah, so I mean, Miami, it's coming up literally just two weeks from now. I'll be out there, which I'm very excited about. And um, it's just going to be scaling it up, scaling up the coaching business as much as possible. Um, you know, not looking, at, looking, not looking at it as much as like how much money can I make per month, but more like how many people can I influence each month, you know? Because after doing interviews with you, um, a few other podcasts that I've been on, um, Sartorial and course pablo's i've had a bunch of people come in and you know they'll, they'll dm me and they'll be seeing my stories for like a few weeks straight of me just constantly going to the gym constantly posting mindset clips and whatnot and um i mean i just get the most fulfillment from seeing people like from south africa like sending me voice memos saying like hey man like you've inspired me to wake up um at 5 a.m this week and i've done it for seven days straight now i just wanted to thank you for like that influence like that's what like really makes me happy like that's that's like a different kind of form of currency that you can't like, you know, print out money. Like, so the goal right now is to really just make a huge influence, but also make some money along the way, because I mean, that's just kind of what you get in exchange for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. What are you saying about people messaging you, thanking you? I mean, you know, you're having a positive impact on the world and that's one of the greatest feelings you can have, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, Travis, to end off, for people who are still unsure about joining the real world, maybe they're thinking it could be a scam for the $50, what advice do you have to them? I, I can't even understand it. For the people that are in the US and you're saying $50 is a lot, I mean, it's just crazy because like, go through this YouTube channel on this video that you're watching it and you'll see hundreds of other kids who have the same kind of success story that I've had. And, um, I mean, not only is it something like I mentioned before, something that can get you thousands of dollars, um, extra added to your income each month. But if you do well enough, you can get connected with Sartorial. You can get connected with Pablo. You can get all this buzz and attention and eyes on your page for social media. So it's, it's more than just making some extra money. I mean, it's a whole other aspect of networking that comes along with it. So I highly recommend it for 50 bucks. I mean, it's just. I honestly, I don't even use the real world as much as I used to. Like I don't go in like and watch that many copywriting videos anymore because I have all my stuff established, but I don't, I don't want to cancel. I, I love being a part of the community and um, being able to talk to everyone, stay connected. So 
it's something that I highly recommend to anyone that's on the fence. Great. And speaking of social medias, for people interested in contacting you or finding out more about you, where can they do so? Yeah, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram at Travis with two S's, Blackburn. Good. We'll add that to the description of the video. And again, Travis, look forward to doing another follow-up in about three months or so, seeing how everything's going for you. And until then, I wish you all the best. Sounds good, dude. I'll have that beachfront view next time.